Corsair introduced the A500 CPU cooler at CES 2020. And when it finally came to market, it retailed for $100. Reviewers claim that this price was too high for what you get. But what if you could get it for half price or less? Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Danny with DTC. If you've never been here before, never been to the channel, we frequently do PC builds, how-to videos, and reviews just like this one. As I said, this is the Corsair A500 CPU cooler. This is an air cooler, even though the box is gigantic and it kind of looks like a liquid cooled box. Some of the quick specs of this CPU cooler are that it has two 120 mil ML120 fans. Those are the magnetic levitation fans. They travel between 400 and 2400 RPMs. And then the gem of this whole system is that Corsair invented this self-retention system. It allows the fans to sit at different heights without actually having to undo them and reattach them to the cooler. They just slide up and down, which I'll show you in a second. And then it also comes with pre-applied thermal paste and they give you a tube of thermal paste extra in the box. As soon as you open the box, it greets you with this sweet Corsair case. This is all your accessories and everything. So it has the instruction manual and you can see here it has great bags that are pre-labeled AMD retention system, AM4, FM2, FM1, that type of stuff. Your next bag is your Intel retention system, which has everything you need for any kind of Intel processor. You have three cable ties and you have an extra tube of XTM50, which is their thermal paste that they have pre-applied. Besides your accessories, it's real easy. You can flip the box over and then slide it up over top of it and you can see your entire CPU cooler. Now, if you turn on its side, they have attached this nice little Corsair screwdriver. This is a Phillips number two, I believe. And it has a very long neck to it. This is to allow you to install the cooler. You really wouldn't be able to do it without this screwdriver. As you can see, this cooler is gigantic. It is one of the biggest air coolers I've ever seen. It's got two fans in a push-pull configuration. The dimensions of the heat sink and the fans are 140 millimeter by 169 by 171. But as you can see on here, it's got four screws holding this into the retention brackets here. And that would allow you to be able to swap out these fans for something else if you wanted to. If you pop off the bottom, mine doesn't have it because I already took it off, but it does have pre-applied thermal paste, which you can see in the pictures here. This front Corsair piece is just a metal plate. It pops on and off with their four quick release clips here. And if you want to see, I can show you this uh, retention system. All you do is pull up on these and the fan will slide up. They give you a ton of extra cabling for your fans to be able to slide it up and down. All I did with mine is tuck it into the back here and you can't even see it. So the, the cooler is so big that it hides all your cables really nicely. I'd say the, the biggest plus of this is it's got two fans and it's a giant cooler so it allows a lot of airflow. If you look at the little visual airflow thing here that Corsair has on their website, you can see the 120 mil fan in the front pulls all that air from your front intake fans. This allows for a great airflow pattern because it's pulling air in from the front and exhausting air out the back and out the top here. Another big benefit that I really like about air coolers is reliability. There's not a whole lot of moving parts on this besides your fans and that allows for less problems down the road, less things to go wrong. Your pump doesn't go out if a, you have a liquid cooler and uh, it's just overall reliable. And believe it or not, spoiler alert, the temps on this thing are actually pretty incredible for an air cooler. Let me give you a quick walkthrough of how to install this on the board. Just, uh, this is not a tutorial or anything, I just wanna show you a quick couple, how easy it is to throw this on. All you have to do with your stock AMD system is take these two brackets off that it comes with on the motherboard. And if you have the stock cooler on here for like a Ryzen 5 3600 or even the 5600X, you'll have to take these brackets off to put the stock cooler on anyways. For my motherboard, the B550, I grabbed the AMD spacers that they have here, the AM4 ones, place them over top of the screw mounting points in the motherboard there on the, on the back plate. You just put these little C-shaped brackets on there Make sure you have your screw mounting point facing up because that's how you're gonna mount down the cooler. Then once you have that down, the thermal paste, like I said, is pre-applied. I took the thermal paste off and used my thermal pad for consistency sake, which I used in the other testing as well. So it's consistent across the board and the thermal pad really doesn't change 
your temperatures that much. It actually does quite a good job. So you could use that daily if you wanted to. And I'll leave a link in the description below for that. But all you gotta do is place your CPU cooler on top of this after you've installed your mounting brackets. This CPU cooler has its mounting screws already installed on the bottom base plate here. You're just gonna line everything up, set your screws on top of it, and then you're gonna use your screwdriver to run these screws down. Just do a back and forth pattern. It only has the two screws. Then you can snap your plate back on and you've got yourself a CPU cooler. I threw this on this little test bench I have here. This is a Ryzen 5 3600. I did all of my old CPU testing on my cooler review for the stock AMD coolers. And if you haven't checked out that video, I'll leave a link in the description so you can take a look at it later. But I threw it on my little test bench here and ran up Cinebench and Blender just to get some stressing on the CPU and look at these results. Cinebench R23 ran 65C. This is 100% CPU load six cores, 12 threads, 65 is a great temp. As you can see, that's the same temperatures that I got on my 240 mil AIO from EK Waterblock. And then Blender is only one degree hotter at 66C. Now, even though the temps are great, not everything on this CPU cooler is perfect. This thing is loud. Give it a listen. Second thing I don't like is this cooler is huge. I understand it has to be big to be able to displace that much heat, but this thing doesn't even look like it'll fit in a case. I mean, you can see when it's attached to this motherboard, it dwarfs the motherboard. It is so large that the motherboard doesn't even look like it is there. As I said at the beginning, the MSRP for this thing was $100. It was actually $99.99 USD. But after all the reviewers saying that it was overpriced for what you're getting and no one purchasing the product, Newegg, Amazon, uh, b &H Photo, everywhere I've looked for this product, it's now $49.99. They have cut the price in half and are offering you the same performance for half price. So now, is it worth it? And believe it or not, right now, Newegg has a $20 mail-in rebate card for this exact CPU cooler, so you can get this thing for 30 bucks. I think that's actually a really good deal. $30 for this CPU cooler for that kind of performance. I mean, you saw the charts. The only notes I have on this entire thing that I would tell you if you are thinking about picking this thing up, I mean, obviously, if you're watching the video, you're probably thinking about picking this up. I would recommend you manually adjust your CPU fan curves. So go into your BIOS and pick a quieter fan curve for yourself. And honestly, if noise is an issue, like I said, you can swap out these fans for better fans, but at that point, you're starting to increase your price. I mean, each 120 mil fan for like a Noctua or a Be Quiet or something like that is gonna cost you another 20 to $30. And then at that point, you could have bought one of those companies coolers. So why would you put this in there? I honestly wanna use this in a build coming up, see how it looks in the case, see how it performs when playing games and everything, and then also see if it's really loud while I'm gaming. I mean, it's loud while I'm, doing stress testing on it, but how often am I gonna actually be 100% my CPU if I'm just using the PC for gaming? So if you wanna check out that build and you're not already subscribed, don't forget to do so by hitting it below and smash that like button too for the YouTube algorithm. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one.